Hey, hello, everybody. Um, glad you guys could join us today. It is, um, it's really great to have you all here on this call and um, want to say hello. So I'm just stalling for a moment or two um, until a couple more people get on the line. But in the meantime, um, welcome. My name is Amy DeVita. Um, and I am the founder of Third Sector Today um, and the COO of Top Nonprofits. We are, if you don't know, um, we are two websites that are dedicated to providing great um, free resources for nonprofit professionals like yourself who want to help um, their causes do more and have more impact. Um, so we love being able to share this kind of content, really good quality stuff, and um, I'll be getting to that in a second. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, today's webinar, and I'm going to pull up the, the slides here. Um, today's webinar is three reasons to start working on your holiday mobile giving strategy now. And it may seem counterintuitive, um, maybe at first, in terms of, you know, it being a beautiful um, summertime and our minds could be elsewhere. I know sometimes that's the case here. And um, we are definitely hoping that, oops, let me just minimize this a little bit. So um, it's hard to put your head around holidays whenever it's gorgeous outside. But we are certain that you guys will completely, um, you guys are definitely going to be setting yourselves up for better success in the fall um, during that really huge um, holiday giving time by getting some strategy together today. So um, just if you guys um, look in the chat box on the left-hand side, the left margin, if you want to just type in a quick little message and so that I can be sure you can hear me okay. Um, that would be great. And see, you can type in down at the bottom. You can do send to everyone. Sounds good. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that it's it's always interesting speaking to this abyss and you don't know, you don't have any faces. You just have the, um, the texts. So, okay. So important is to start thinking about holiday giving um, for a couple of reasons. According to a 2012 GuideStar survey, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, but over four, over 50 percent of organizations receive the majority of their contributions between October and December. So clearly, it's a really important time of the year. Um, add to that a couple of interesting tidbits. Um, according to the Giving USA study, 72 percent of giving is done by individuals, um, and let's not forget that um, the even though NGOs right now are trending to pre-recession giving numbers before 2008 recession, things have changed quite a bit dramatically when it comes to the mobile world. So that's the other aspect of what we're going to be talking about today. Because even if you copied what was being done prior to the recession, um, it's not going to be the same because guess what? Your donors have expectations now, a new level of expectations when it comes to ease of use. And that expectation is being set by, non by for profit companies that do a lot um, in marketing. So thank you, Apple. And we'll all be able to learn um, a little bit about that. So um, in a moment, I'm going to make the introduction. I just want to give you an overview. If you need to communicate with me, please um, include a little text message over on the side, which you did, or you can raise your hand across the top. There's an interact um, hand there. You can raise your hand if you have a question. If you have a question for Dale during the, um, during the presentation, feel free and I will convey the message. I'll, I'll interject and ask Dale to um, address it if it's um, very timely. If it's something I think we're going to be covering, I will save it and then we will have time, probably have some time for Q&A at the end. So um, no pressure. Okay, before I go, um, I'm sorry, before I put myself on mute, what I would like to do is take a moment and say thank you to Dale. Um, introduce him to everybody here, Dale Knoop. He is the... Um, you know, he, Dale is a, mo a mobile communications specialist. He is a pioneer and expert. Um, he's an Emmy Award winner, a patent holder, and he's also the CEO and founder of Raise Mobile, 
and one of the brightest people I know. So he is extremely qualified to be talking about this, and I appreciate him taking time out of his day to um, share some of the latest trends, user trends, and donor trends when it comes to holiday giving and mobile. So with that, what I'll do is put myself on mute. And Dale, are you there? I'm here. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to you, and um, we'll reconnect at the end. Great. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. And it's great to be with you all today. Thank you for attending. Um, So as Amy mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about three easy things to do that you can sort of get going right now with in the summertime while you're having some summer fun. Uh, Perhaps what I'm presenting today isn't as going to be as uh, fun as a tiny dog eating a tiny ice cream cone, but uh, hopefully it will get your minds thinking about things that you can be doing around mobile giving and mobile engagement in time for the holidays. And I've got my contact info for information there. Um, as Amy mentioned, there'll also be some opportunity to ask questions later. So let's go ahead and get started. So Amy mentioned my background. Uh, I was the TV guy at Sprint in the early 2000s, the mid 2000s. Uh, while I was at Sprint, we were the first carrier to carry live TV on cell phones. And for that, I won an Emmy. And there's a picture of me in the lower right hand corner with the Emmy and sadly Sprint didn't want to give me any of those. I got a piece of paper, but such is life in the big corporate machine. As it meant, it's mentioned here, I created Raise Mobile to help nonprofits deal with the challenges that are coming at them in the mobile space. And what's really happening right now is PC internet usage is slowing and declining and it's being supplanted by the mobile phone. So as you think about giving, and you think about the only channel that's growing right now is the online channel, the online channel is quickly becoming a mobile channel. And and as I'll show here, it's a very lucrative channel. It's a very dominant channel. And uh, what we're seeing is not only our millennials giving, but also boomers as well, because everybody loves easy. And, And mobile is one of those things where large corporations like Nokia and Microsoft and Sony have not been able to get it. And had they started earlier, in my opinion, they would have done a better job in adapting to the mobile world. And hopefully what I share with you today here is going to help you get ready or or go ahead and get going in the mobile realm. So we talked about three things. The first thing, and we all know this, mobile is everywhere. It's, It's a planetary phenomenon. Uh, It started, you know, slowly with phones that were just about talking and has now morphed into phones that are about chatting and Internet access and Wi-Fi hotspots, summoning taxi cabs, all kinds of different things. But mobile is everywhere and, and all nonprofits have to embrace this fact. The sad truth is that many nonprofits today, a vast majority, well over three out of four nonprofits today, are relying on a form that was designed to be used on a PC. That's their mobile donation form. And there's a wealth of data out there that says, whether it's a for-profit endeavor or a nonprofit, the donor does not want to go through that on their phone. And we ourselves are the same way. We're, We're part of the sample size. We look at things on our phone. If they're not optimized for the phone, we tend to not want to engage. So nonprofits have to embrace the fact that mobile is everywhere and this is not going to change. This is a really, really eye-opening statistic to me, 186 million people. So if you take the size of the United States and you take out everybody that's maybe 12 or under, this is 77% across the entire population. If you take out the people that are 12 and under, perhaps they don't have a phone, maybe they do. This is a very, very large segment, and this is the smartphone segment. So you think about the smartphone. The smartphone has really only been here for maybe nine years, really only maybe eight years. Um, Apple did not get serious about the smartphone until 08, and and, and look at it now. It's a huge market, and and, and seemingly everyone has one, And, and this data would suggest pretty much everyone has one. 
This one is another one that's really, really eye-opening to me and is indicative of the mobile is everywhere. 91% of adults have their phone within arm's reach 24-7. I've read it's the first screen you check when you wake up. It's the last screen you check before you go to bed. It's changing people's behavior in the way that they interact with everything in the world and nonprofits are no different. So if mobile is everywhere, what do nonprofits need? Well, they need simple mobile giving for the 2015 holidays. Now is really the time to begin. If you wanna wait another year and, and, and say, well, we're gonna miss the 2015 season, people like the Chronicle of Philanthropy have suggested that's probably a recipe for lost donations. And there's really no reason to risk losing donations this holiday season with it with a non-existent or poor mobile experience. So I talked a little bit about mobile versus PC. A lot of nonprofits are still relying on a PC experience. This is Ronald McDonald House here uh, where we are, and that's Kansas City. This is their raised mobile site on the left. You can see that it's very easy to understand what's here. This is their site on the phone on the right, and this is their PC site. Now, they've done the right thing. They have a mobile redirect in place, so when you go to their top-level domain on your mobile phone, you're redirected to their raised mobile site, and you can see that the donate button, which is the primary reason the people to go to your website by a two-to-one margin as reported by Blackbaud, the donate button is easy to find as well as what content is there. The first action on the right, which I always say is not really engagement, it's navigation. That is pinching and swiping to figure out what's on the page. You're wasting the person's time. And I know that for my time doing TV, people will give you about a minute on their phone, whether it's a mobile optimized experience or a PC experience, regrettably jammed into a mobile phone, they're gonna give you about a minute. And if they can't get to where they want, they'll leave, they'll bail. And as other people have said, relationships right now in the for-profit world, the nonprofit world are being made and broken on what people see about you on their mobile phone. Mobile is everywhere. We're helping people make mobile donations. So to kind of put that in perspective, what kind of donation size are we seeing versus the PC? What kind of donation size could be waiting for you this holiday season? Our average donation, which is on the high side, if not above the high side for the PC, is $87. So we're seeing large donations. And I have to believe that this, again, is a combination of two things. Millennials aren't as cheap as people think they are. And boomers are coming in because if you make it easy for them to give on their phone right then and there, when they feel the impulse to give, they give. And like people have seen at Dell Computer, people have seen it at Five Guys Burgers, the average ticket for them, and those are both for-profit businesses, the average ticket for them is about 25% higher than if, the, if there was an order placed through a PC. So what that means is the fulfillment of, a mo of an impulse on a mobile phone is leading to a larger transaction size. And we're seeing, we're seeing that, excuse me, Staying with the little dog theme, $87 means don't, mobile donations are big. They are big. We've seen donations on a regular basis, especially around the holidays, in the hundreds of dollars and the thousands of dollars. If you make it easy for them to give on the thing that is in their hand 24-7 seemingly, they're going to make a donation. The second thing that I want to cover today in the three things that you can be thinking about this summer Mobile taps the impulse to give. Everybody has pointed out the, this out and, and the millennial impact reports of 2013 and 2014, excuse me, 2012 and 2013 were really good about pointing out that millennials want to give when they are in the moment. Those are their words. They say, I'm in the moment. So giving is an impulse. I know that there's planned giving and that's very good. There's recurring giving and that's very good. But all of this typically starts with an impulse to say, I want to do something to help. And as we pointed out in number one, their phone is right there. When you're talking to a donor, 
I almost can bet right now that their phone is in their hand while you're talking to them. Nine out of 10 mobile searches lead to action. So this holiday season, when a nonprofit hears about you and they search for you on their mobile phone, what will they see? And they're leading to transactions. Over half are leading to transactions. So again, if they're there in their phone, they've got the impulse, it's something that renders quickly on their phone and is easy to navigate and very, very easy to give, then you increase the chances of somebody searching for you, hearing about you on the radio, reading about you in the paper, whatever it might be. A friend mentions you on social media, they, they seek you out. You've got a great mobile experience. You're going to increase the opportunity for a gift because of this kind of behavior that's going on with mobile search leading to transactions. Action followed by a transaction is what you want this holiday season and making it so on somebody's mobile phone is very easy to do. So this is our donation process and I point this out as an example of easy frictionless giving. And I always talk about removing friction for the pro from the process of giving. Some people in nonprofit space talk about the donor journey. I understand that, but far too many are using too many pages. As the Chronicle of Philanthropy has pointed out, there are too many pages that are needed to complete a gift. So as you see here, one and two are actually the same page on your phone. You choose your amount. And then in the case of a returning donor that has created a PIN, we don't use user IDs and passwords. We use a PIN. There's no reason for user IDs and passwords anymore that people just end up forgetting. So you choose your amount, enter your PIN, confirm your donation, and then you're done. And at the end, you can share. This is an example of frictionless, and in some cases, repeat. I've stored my credentials this way. We store credentials in a tokenized fashion. If at your nonprofit, you were to talk to the development director, perhaps you are a development director, you know these three letters called PCI. PCI is, is the credit card term for how do you treat donor information. Many nonprofits require donors to complete the form over and over and over again. That adds friction to the process. What we wanted to deliver to the table and what future platforms like ours will do, hopefully without the user ID and password, is give people the ability to achieve the same level of, of credit card security that you have with Amazon and Apple and people like that. World-class platforms that, that tokenize credit card information at the option of the donor. They're not required to create an account before they even make their donation. You want to capture that donation because, again, as I pointed out, you've got about a minute to let them do what they came to do and don't frustrate them with a lot of friction. So this is an example of a frictionless process for giving. And I think this is what helps contribute to the fact that our average gift is about $90. So kind of a mobile theme, yes, you know, it taps the impulse to give, but just let them use their phone to make a gift. It's there, it's internet connected. On our platform, 100% of the donation goes to you, so why not let them make a gift through their phone? It's in their hand. It's right there. And, and I always like to say, if they have a checkbook, <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like this when they're thinking about you. It's not sitting there waiting for them to say, oh, yes, well, here, you know, you should write a check to uh, this nonprofit or you should care about this cause and, and go ahead, write a check. I know people, young people, and this will increasingly become the way as people start to transition more and more of their banking to online, they're not going to have a checkbook. And, and it, it, you know, it isn't sitting there looking like this. If you can find it, I know in my household, it's typically in my wife's purse and I have to go hunt it down. Whereas my phone is with me all the time. This is one that, that it, it is an older statistic. And I know that this has grown. But there are 25% of Americans that only use mobile devices to get to the Internet. Um, for a lot of demographic groups, African-Americans and Hispanics, this is their PC. This is their broadband connection. And this is only going to go up. There isn't going to be a PC. And yet again, as I mentioned at the outset of the webinar, 
The only channel that's growing is online in the nonprofit space. And the online channel is quickly becoming a mobile phone dominated channel if it's not already there today. The last one that we'll talk about, so the third one, and, and this is kind of my tribute to direct mail. Direct mail is not going to go away. It's still an effective channel for some. The ROI, it's going to get tougher to maintain a decent ROI with costs going the way that they are with the United uh, Postal Service and uh, the, the cost of just creating this material and then the ROI will get challenged by the fact that people are transitioning behaviors uh, to their phone and, and increasingly there is the notion too that if you don't have mobile mixed into your nonprofits efforts and, and open it up as a channel, there is a certain question that, that pops into somebody's head and they say, so if I write a check, am I going to get more direct mail? Or they all know that you do this. And, and, and I'm not saying that this is a bad one, but you have to think about it. Uh, mailing lists get sold. So I write a check to one nonprofit and all of a sudden 10 people have my information and now I'm being flooded with things that, that uh, I really didn't ask for. So long winded way of saying that there's an easy way to mix mobile into direct mail and, and, and increase the efficacy of your direct mail. I wrote a blog post about two weeks ago that cited some studies from about 18 months back that said, what do people want from their nonprofit in direct mail? And most of the respondents viewed very favorably just getting a postcard. So no more four page appeal letters, just send them a postcard. And a postcard at Christmas time would be a really, really good thing to say, to say, you know, happy holidays. If you're not thinking about us, we're thinking about you. And here's some easy way to give and, and, and mixing mobile into direct mail and printed materials is an option that works. So this is an example of a printed item. This happens to be a business card. I actually advocate that all nonprofits should have three ways to give on their business cards as you hand them out at events, as you hand them out when you have one-on-ones with, with major donors, you can have three ways to give with their phone right then and there. So this is an example of what the United Way has done with opening up mobile giving at an event. So they had a luncheon. They said, donate through your phone. You can win a Jamal Charles signed Chiefs football helmet. And here were three ways to give. So yes, they had a QR code. They had the ability to text this word to the phone number to use the form that I showed you before. This is not text to give. Millennials have said, and, and I feel the same way, I don't want charges added to my cell phone bill. I want my cell phone bill to be paying for my cell phone service, and that's it. And millennials have said they'd rather have their donations unlimited, and certainly a $10 donation pales in comparison to uh, an almost $90 donation, as we're seeing. And then here's a URL, and this URL can even be shorter than this through a, a variety of short uh, uh, URL shortening services like Google or Bitly or whoever. But this could be any direct mail piece that you send out or any piece of paper that you hand out at an event. Have the presider at your event or have your direct mail piece say, hey, here are three giving options. And I know your phone is right there as you're looking at the mail. And I know your checkbook isn't laying there open with a pen on it waiting for you to write me a check. Just whip out your phone and go ahead and make a donation. And this can be, again, on anything including the outside of, of the, the direct mail piece on the envelope. So they don't even have to open it up. But if they're not going to open it up, why not go ahead and send them just a, a postcard? Mixing mobile into direct mail is also more secure. And, and it's more secure from the standpoint of paper forms are risky and costly. Your nonprofit, if you take people's credit card information, you have to dispose of that, that properly. You've now taken credit card information in. If the, if the donor has a problem with their credit card, you could be a source of, of something that bad that happened to them. So why not have somebody fill out a completely secure form on their phone? An example of the security that we offer is when you complete the donation form, 
that donation form goes directly into the server that's connected to the credit card system. So as the data is entered, it's completely secure, it's processed right then and there, and nobody stores anything, not in the phone, not on the server, and we do give the donor the option to store their credentials, as I showed you earlier, with the PIN, but that's at their option. I wish all nonprofits would really, really consider removing the ability to put credit card information on a paper form. Yes, I know people use it, but it's very, very risky for everybody. And it's also costly because now that information has to be entered by hand and with a really nice mobile optimized form, it doesn't have to be that way. You can let the donor do that. And that's also something for events. Um, people have said, well, you know, we'll have them queue up and we'll have them swipe their information through a, a square reader or something like that. Everybody there has got their own phone. Give them a piece of paper that looks like this that says here, this is what you can do to make a gift right now. The United Way raised thirty four hundred dollars in 40 minutes just with this card in front of one hundred and sixty people. So not a lot of people and they, they made gifts right then and there. So direct mail, you mix in the mobile, what's it gonna do? It's gonna add muscle to your direct mail piece. And why is that? A little bit of fun here, again, some summer fun. The reason that this adds muscle is because you're giving people another option for a device that's always with them. And right there, it's just the price of ink Plus, obviously, the platform that you're using, and ours is very cost-effective. It's less than a dollar a day. So you want your, your direct mail to be like, you know, a happy, incredible Hulk and not this sad green blob over here. Why wouldn't you do this to your direct mail? It's just, again, something that is another option. And, and, and I always like to call it kind of the Coca-Cola theory of giving. Coca-Cola is in every form factor, in every location. You can't miss it. Mobile giving should be the same way because everybody has a phone. They're in their hand all the time. If you make it easy for them to use that device and make a gift, then they can. And, and it's something that's smart to do. The opposite of that is say, well, there's only one way you can give. And it has to be a check. And for those people that don't want to write a check or refuse to fill out the envelope or whatever, then you don't get a gift. So it's always better to have more options for the donor than it is to have less. And, and adding mobile will, will uh, add muscle to, to your direct mail pieces. So shortly, 30 minutes or so, this is going to be a brief webinar. I hope to answer some questions, but there you have it, some summer fun, some easy things to do. It's the time to go mobile. And why is that? We've talked about that here. This is an opportunity to maximize your holiday giving. Mobile is everywhere. It's all around us. It's not going to go away. At some point, your nonprofit will just have to address the fact of what do we look like on a mobile phone? What are we putting into our social media feed? If we're going out with an appeal on Facebook, are we asking for people to complete a PC form on their phone? Chances are they won't, and you just lost a donation. Mobile taps the impulse. I always used to say when I was doing TV, people use their mobile phones to do two things, and it's the same thing today. Stay informed and fill in a time gap when they're bored. But both of those things are very, very impulsive. And a mobile phone is an incredibly impulsive device. You've got the internet in the palm of your hand. And then don't give up on direct mail. But as direct mail's use and efficacy starts to slide, use it to tap into the fact that, again, mobile is everywhere and mobile taps the impulse to give. So mix mobile into your direct mail. It's a smart thing to do. Just as you've got your, your top level domain on your direct mail. Now you can give them three ways to give through their mobile phone right then and there. So that's it. Like I said, a little summer fun today. Three things that are easy to do. So thank you very much. I encourage you to visit our website. You can text some uh, causes to your phone. See what. 
Dale? Oh, hi, Dale. Uh, hi. Yeah. I um I have a question for you, and yeah. I want to thank everybody and thank you very much for this presentation. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, what I like to arm what I like to do is arm our followers with resources that help them to get the management buy in that oftentimes you know is is required. Um, I think that's a safe bet. Um, since you deal with so many different organizations, different sizes, different types of missions, um, is there a particular pushback that you hear frequently um, that you could share with us and maybe speak to how best to be prepared for it? Yeah, the, the pushback that I've heard um, from uh, a lot of nonprofits is um, our donors don't give that way. And, and uh, that's a very sort of true statement, but it's also very a, a, a very scary statement because what that says is that you've got this base of people that are of a particular uh, behavior, and that is they don't, I, I guess they don't use mobile phones, but um, I, I've been out in public and seen, you know, an elderly person sitting across from each other, perhaps, you know, man and woman, they're married, and they don't look up from their phones. So this whole idea that their donors don't give that way, for a lot of people, it's because they've never asked. And, and there was a study that was um, done, again, the Millennial Impact Report, and the top reason that people had not given through their phone was they'd never been asked. And, and so if 77% of the American population has a phone, you better start asking them, and you better, you better start addressing the fact that they spend more and more minutes of every day living on that phone. So the idea that their donors don't give that way, um, you know, it could also be the same kind of thing that people said when they were sort of dealing with the onset of the internet back in 99 and 2000. Well, our people don't do that, right? So Pizza Hut was the first one to offer online ordering. Pizza Hut could have easily said, well, people don't order pizzas that way. Well, it's because the internet was small. Well, back then the internet was small and now the mobile internet is gigantic and it grows every day and people's transition of their behaviors, young and old, all demographic groups, they're all transitioning behaviors to their mobile phone. Why? It's with them all the time. And so it's, it's something that if there's pushback, it's it's temporary pushback because at some point that's going to be the preferred channel for everybody. And certainly if you're seeing like we see an $87 average donation, then I would say, well, what is your average donation online right now? What, what does it hurt your nonprofit to go figure out something that you can do in mobile today as an experiment to see what it means so that you can start to get your mobile muscle together, if you will kind of touching back on the webinar slides, because you're going to need it. If you think that you're not going to need it, then you might as well change the name of your nonprofit to Microsoft, because Microsoft right now, they came out last week and apologized for how poor they were on mobile. And, hmm. and, and there's no reason to be poor on mobile when there are people like ourselves out there that have made it for easy, uh, easy for the cause to connect with the donor of all ages. So it's it's a it's a reasonable pushback, but I'd be really really uh, afraid if my donor group was aging, and, and to the point where I was not cultivating anybody new, especially through online channels and social media and digital channels like email, um, without a mobile component. Absolutely, um, I think it's probably there was probably a large number of people who said that they don't drive cars before cars were invented, so. Yeah, it, it's, it's <laughs> it depends like, on how you frame the question, right? Yeah, like, it's a bit like saying I don't do email; I have a typewriter, you know. And you're like, okay, that's fine, but um, um, you yeah. know, and, and I don't want to say it in a bad way, but uh, everybody is looking at the world right now to see what your mobile experience is like and how you treat mobile visitors to your brand, to your nonprofit, and, and, and if if you say, well, I don't really have a good mobile site then they sort of make a mental note of that and go, well, they're not really ready for prime time. They're not mobile and they will start to favor things that are really, really good experiences on their phone.
because it's with them all the time. And that's what they do. They, they love staying in their phone. They love being in Facebook all the time. They love being in Twitter all the time, answering email all the time on their phone. Most email is open first and sometimes exclusively on a mobile phone. So if you go out with an appeal in email, you have to address the fact that if you're, if you're making an appeal, there has to be a great mobile experience there for mobile openers to take advantage of. There was a study that came out maybe a couple of weeks ago that said, hey, email opens are up, but actions are down. And I immediately wrote a blog that said, yeah, that's because too many people are leaning on a PC experience to be their mobile giving experience. Mm-hmm. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do mobile shopping on your phone at Amazon if it was constantly pinch and swipe, pinch and swipe. And, and if, if you know, looking around for what you wanted to do was really, really laborious, you've just wasted that one minute that people are going to give you on their phone to do what they wanted to go do. If you make it easy for them, uh, one out of approximately four donors on our platform has stored their credit card information. So if you make it easy for them to make repeat purchases, and in this case, repeat gifts to nonprofits, chances are that they're going to do that. I think that's, um, yeah, that's absolutely um, a lot of what I'm hearing at different conferences I go to as well. Um, that's the way people are connecting and through social in addition, I mean, you're just seeing large segments of different demographics, not the ones that, you know, it's not necessarily the the millennials, but I think the Facebook, um, Facebook demographic that the, I'm sorry, that Facebook users, the boomer demographic is the fastest growing. So, you know, you, you've, what was once considered, you know, you thought it was just common sense. Oh, well, you're over this age, then you, you're not on social media. That's not the same. Um, now people are more connected to their smartphones than ever. I'm, I'm embarrassed or proud, I don't know, to say that, you know, I'm that person. I wake up and my phone is right next to me and I open turn it on, you know, I look at it to see the weather. I check my, I check Facebook. I check my emails as soon as I get up and I did it right before I went to bed. And I don't think I'm terribly unique in that scenario. So um, it's, it's a lot. I hope everybody on the call is really taking this into consideration. And if nothing else, take your smartphone and go to your website, your organization's website. And what does it look like? Is it easy? Yeah, that's a great thing to do uh, with your board. Um, and, and, and I always say, um, if your board members uh, are carrying flip phones, ask them to upgrade because they need to be thinking about the future. And, and the future, as I pointed out here today, with the three things for summer fun, mm-hmm. the future is a mobile dominated future. And that is a planetary phenomenon. And the PC isn't going away just like direct mail is not going away, but what needs to be added in a really, really effective manner for this holiday season, don't wait till next holiday season. You need to start adding mobile giving and see what works. And you'll be surprised because you will get older people that will make large donations to them if you let them. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate the, the presentation. I appreciate all of you for joining us. Um, just to wrap it up, uh, just to pull this together, I guess, and a nice, put a nice little bow on it. Um, takeaways, you know, it's a mobile world. Let's embrace that. Let's look at the ways we can use that and leverage that to our cause, um, to the advantage of our causes. And everyone likes easy. So the forms need to be easy. That means take a look on your smartphone, go to your website and see how it looks. And beyond that, open up one of the emails that you send out or your, you know, your, um, your organization sends out to the, um, your donors, open it up on your smartphone, click on the link. What, what's it taking you to and how does it look? How does it replicate on your, on your smartphone? Because that's the experience people are having. And if it's hard, you, know, you heard Dale say it's under a minute. And I, I think a minute is, uh, he, from what I do, publish, you know, online publishing, um, a minute is a very long time. That's like an eternity. I mean, really, you're talking seconds. Um, so number two is everyone loves easy. Check your forms. And three, secure. Um, you got to really definitely be interested in the security and how you're collecting really sensitive financial data from um, from your donors, you're ultimately responsible for that stuff. And I 
I'm always surprised when I see a paper form, but um, I realize oftentimes that's the only way that you have to do it. Um, but now that there are, and this is what we're trying to do, is introduce you to other tools that make it easier to um, streamline, the, streamline that data, then you, there's no more excuse for it. Um, and I guess number 3B is have everybody on your board, make sure they have smartphones. <laughs> so, um, you know, thanks all. I um, hope you're all enjoying your summer. I am going to send an email um, with, it'll include Dale's um, contact information, but it will, so if you have more in, or you have questions you'd like to ask him offline about um, mobile, um, please, you'll have his contact info there. You could see some of it in the presentation. And I will also include the recording. Um, and uh, thank you so much. And we will be looking forward to the next time we all get together for the next webinar. So thank you. Thanks, Dale. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.